I would like you now to give a real tonight welcome to the Senator from Massachusetts, Mr. John Kennedy. Good of me if I called you John. Because if you make it, it would be nice for my daughter to know that we <laughs> have a small arrangement. John, you had everything. Uh, anything you wanted to do, you could have done. Well, why did you go into politics? Well, I worked for a newspaper from 1940 to 1945, and I went to the United Nations Conference in San Francisco and then Potsdam. It's quite obvious, uh, and has been, I think, and it's going to be true even more, that all the great decisions which are going to be made, which will affect the lives of everyone in this room now, will be made by the United States government and with uh, their allies across the world and by the communist government. They'll not be made... Uh, uh, I don't think this has ever been as true as it is now. It's been true in a measure, really, since the administration of Roosevelt. The government has played a greater role, but it's particularly great since the end of World War II. The United States is really the only guardian at the gate against the communist advance. The responsibility is heavy on us, and I think that as an interested citizen in the United States, I cannot think of a, a greater privilege than serving in the House or the Senate. Now, as I've said, after a long time, the presidency is the key office. What we've seen happen in the last six weeks, I think, indicates that the judgment of the president, his responsibility, his competence, his experience, his vigor, really are going to decide whether we're going to live in peace, whether we're going to live in security, what our relations are going to be with the communists, what our relations are going to be with the people around the world. It's the president, not the House, not the Senate, or even the combination. This is the great office. And therefore, I run for the presidency because for the same reason I ran for the House, because this is the place where action is going to take place, affecting the lives of, this, of our people and every people in the next four or eight years. Senator... Have there been any amusing things happen to you since you've been campaigning that you could tell me in 30 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> you know you never worked on a show like this. Uh, no, I was made an honorary Indian, and I now cheer for our side on TV. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to answer questions from the people? Tale. Let's have, you know, responsible questions from <laughs> a responsible people. Uh, Senator, my name is Don Allen from Chicago. Uh, the problem, it seems to me, that we don't uh, overcome is the fact that the communists send fellow travelers into countries like they did into Tokyo, and they appeal to the youth at an immature age. Why don't we send salesmen? The democratic countries send... Yes, I understand the question. The question is, why can't we do what they do? In their areas. Let me just say that uh, I would say the majority of the demonstration, while it was acting on orders from uh, Moscow, was obviously handled by native Japanese communists. We really have to depend on the people within those countries themselves. Do they want to be free? Do they value freedom? The United States cannot do any more than, I think we can do several things. We can maintain a strong national defense second to none. Secondly, we can, within our own country, build the kind of society which makes people want to follow our example rather than the example of China and uh, Russia. Thirdly, we can assist these people moving into their own economic development. In the final analysis, they have to believe in freedom themselves. I don't think you can sell freedom in a package. I think you have to believe in it and want to live under that kind of a system. We hope that they're going to choose that. And after all, the, China, the communists have not been successful in gaining control of any country in the last 14 years, really since the end of World War II, except by force the possible exception now of Cuba. We don't know what's going to happen in Cuba, but the people have rebelled against their control in every country, Poland, Hungary, East Germany, where they could, Tibet. I don't think people want to live under a communist system at all. Now, students are in a revolutionary frame of mind against the existing power, but in the long run, the best asset we have is the desire of people to be free.